Hello and welcome to another instructional video brought to you by Zappysys. In this video we're going to cover how to use a custom ODBC JDBC bridge driver. This is especially useful for when you want to consume JDBC driver data into non-Java apps. Things like Excel, Power BI, Informatica, or maybe you have some other app where you want to consume data or expose data from it but don't have native JDBC driver support. If you've seen any other Zappysys tutorials like this one, you may have noticed that most of the time I start off on a web page for that specific component on the Zappysys website, just like the one you see here. And I only want to point that out because this particular component has some prerequisites that must be installed before you use it. And so you'll definitely want to check out this help file link and go through those step-by-step -step, uh, instructions if you need some help with those prerequisites. And I'll walk you through how to do that. Okay, so as always, the first thing you want to do to use this custom component is download the Zappysys ODBC Power Pack. And you can get that from the website by hovering over Products, ODBC Power Pack, and download the free trial. And I'll be sure to put a link for that one in the description below. In addition to installing the ODBC Power Pack, you'll also need to have Java installed on your machine. So if you do, that's great. If you don't, no worries. We're going to check out this help file link right here on how do we get that. The bare minimum you'll need is Java Runtime. And the best place I'm aware of to get the best free version is this link right here on Amazon. And we recommend version 8. That's the one that I have installed on this machine I'm using. So I'm going to click this link. And now you can scroll down in this list to find your specific version that you need. So 64-bit Windows version 8 JRE MSI. You can use this link right here. Now let's say you have another use case and you want to use the older Oracle Java and you already have an Oracle Java license. That's totally fine. We'll hop back over to this help file and you can use this other link right here that says download JRE8. It'll take you to this page. Make sure you're on the tab for Java 8. Scroll down to the JRE section. Expand it. Go to Windows, and here's your 64-bit JRE installer. So those are the steps to get the free JDK or JRE or the Oracle JRE for your Windows machine. Once you have everything installed, you can launch the ODBC UI on your machine by simply searching for ODBC. As always, remember that you have two DSN or data source name tabs. One is for the user level, which I'm using and looking at right now, and one is for the system level. If you want to create a DSN that was only accessed by your user, the one that you're logged in as, this user DSN tab is fine. But if you want to create a DSN that can be accessed by some other user or some other service account or some other process that isn't specific to your user context, you'll want to use this system DSN tab. And just know that system DSNs must be created separately for 32-bit or 64-bit DSNs. As you can see, I'm using the 64-bit UI to create a new ODBC connection. So just pay attention to that. If you're using a user DSN, it doesn't matter. You can use either one. And that's the one I'm going to use. So I'm just going to click Add. And as you can see, there's a lot of custom Zappysys drivers. This demo is for the JDBC bridge driver, so I'm going to click that one. The first thing I'm going to do is give this DSN a name, and I'm going to call it My Data. Now, when you're configuring this driver, you'll definitely want to refer to your JDBC driver documentation, because there are many out there. Just as an example, I was searching on GitHub earlier, and just for the term JDBC, you get tens of thousands of response. So just pay attention to your specific JDBC driver documentation, and that's going to help you enter all the information you need for this driver. So for this demo, I'm using a Postgres SQL JDBC example, and I already have my connection string over here that I'm just going to copy and paste in there. You'll notice this is vendor specific, so it has my host name, it has my port number, it has my database name. You'll need all those components. The driver class field is optional, but if you know it, I would recommend putting it in there. It might avoid some errors later on. 
the JDBC driver path is where you specify the file path for the actual driver that you're using. And it usually ends with the .jr. So I'm going to paste that in. And then the username and password for your JDBC driver. Paste those in as well. So that's really it. I mean, once you've entered those things and everything is correct or you want to make sure that it's correct, you can click this test connection button. And this will also make sure that, hey, it works. And that also validated that we do have Java installed. So just know that before you try to test the connection. You probably noticed that we just only entered a few uh, values, but there are lots of other sections for things like error handling and log settings, just to give you an idea of how flexible and useful this custom driver is. So now let's check out the preview tab. This is where we can use the SQL editor here to get the data that this ODBC connection will return. You can enter any SQL into this editor that the JDBC driver accepts. And you'll likely want to select from an existing table using this drop down menu here. So as an example, I'll pick the customer data table. And we can see that SQL is already generated for this table that contains all of the columns. So if I click the preview data button, we'll see that data is returned in the pane below from that table. And also whenever we use the preview data button, the metadata is automatically generated for us too, which is we can see right here. So when you're finished with the SQL editor and you're ready to start using this ODBC DSN, you can just click the OK button and it'll save it. And now you can use this connection in any app that permits ODBC connections for things like Excel or Power BI, Informatica, and more. That's how easy it is to use the custom Zappy Sys ODBC JDBC bridge driver. Okay, so we've already covered how to create a custom ODBC connection for an API source. Now let's see how to use the data from that ODBC connection in Power BI. So as you can see, I already have an instance of Power BI open, and I'm going to click Get Data. We're using a custom Zappy Sys connector, so I'm going to go down to Other, and we're using an ODBC connection. So if you had multiple ODBC connections, you'd have to pick the one from the list. That's obviously the one that we made. But you don't have to specify the DSN right there. You can do a DSN less option by just pasting in the connection string. So remember, I'm going to hop back over to our connection. We can use the copy settings feature and actually get that connection string for our API. So I'm going to paste that in there. And if you wanted to go ahead and write the SQL statement for the specific data you're looking for, you could do that. I'm going to leave it blank. And now we see all of the options available for our source. I'm going to use the orders table. And there we have it. You know, we could make something super simple like order ID by date. You know, we could drag in other tables. You could do whatever you wanted to do in Power BI using this data source. And when you're ready, you could publish the report, schedule a refresh, or you could even install Power BI's data gateway, not to be confused with the Zappy Sys gateway. But just know that if you use the Power BI gateway, you can't do the DSN less option where we paste it in the string. You need to use a system DSN because that gateway uses a service account and that service account needs access to the ODBC connection. But that's it. That's how easy it is to retrieve data from an API source with that custom Zappy Sys ODBC connection and then using the data in Microsoft Power BI. If you want to give it a try but you haven't already downloaded the ODBC Power Pack yet, go ahead and do that now. And don't forget the link is in the description below. And as always, be sure to subscribe to the Zappy Sys YouTube channel to get more tips and tricks like this and other updates in the future.